new season of NFL football is here, and we're off in 2023 on EA Sports. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They're led out by a former number one overall pick and a one-time league leader in passing yards out of Florida State, Jameis Winston. Throughout his career, a few have doubted Jameis Winston's ability to throw the football. The concerns, they've always centered around his accuracy and taking care of it. When he makes good decisions on the field, excellent numbers usually result. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 16 yards on the game's first play and a quick first down. One down, only about 500 more to go this season. He would certainly welcome most of his passes this year going as well as that. Now that the first one is over, time to settle into a groove and begin the long journey towards Week 18 and hopefully the playoffs. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Winston. And that will be incomplete. That was the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Here's Lewis to return. That'll go as a 42-yard punt, but a net of 32. They had a 10-yard return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production, and the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season. His best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. Man, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because... They handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. And this shot downfield on second down is brought in. And it'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. A game there of 30 big ones. This play is a thing of beauty when it works as designed because they let the running back slip out of the backfield and head down the sideline on a wheel route. Number one, it's easy for him to get lost. And number two, really tough for the linebacker to run with him. And this ball's right on the money and leads to a big play. Off the play fake, Cousins. That one caught by Carter. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. A chance for their first points of the season here as it's first and goal. Here's Cousins. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. 
Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. well anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. Cousins. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Looked like a possible miscommunication there because that's a curl route, and he ends up throwing it high. Somehow they just didn't have the timing or understand what each one was doing. And his kick is good. And the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So a pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today, Paul. Here's Humphreys. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They were forced to punt on their initial drive of the new season. Now they're ready to go as they begin again with a first and ten. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. They'll stay on the ground. Wilder again. And he powers his way up past the 30. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And that's good for a gain of six. And that will bring up second down. Here's Winston. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Heavy set out there on third and one. Now Wilder. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. We ought to come up with a t-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulder square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. This is Wilder. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Jameis to throw it. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10, right at the 40. Now Winston. And his throw here is incomplete. Haven't met a corner that's worked this all yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? Wilder, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. The throw right side here going to be incomplete. And that drive is going pretty darn well. Three previous times converted on third down. But on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. 
So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And yeah, this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They finished off their opening drive of the campaign with a field goal on the last drive. Now they'll search for a touchdown here on this goal round, first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he put up a good fight, but he's going to be taken down behind the line of scrimmage. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw, Cousins. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. They call it a loss of a yard there. And that'll bring up fourth down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen. And they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. Now a fair catch taken, maybe a yard or two shy of midfield. No return, but it goes down as just a punt of 31 yards. And the Buccaneer offense will be set up well as they take over. They'll run with Wilder. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They run the counter. Wilder, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. The defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front, so when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say, and Winston lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And his crew will take over with the football we hear talk about create turnovers create turnovers in particular they wanted to force some fumbles they got one right there and it shows you how the game has changed over time it used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of the quarterback in the pocket now if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free your coaches are upset with you all right so if you're a quarterback it starts all the way back in the youth leagues take care of the ball take care of the ball take care of the ball because here come the defenders now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. Well, this will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Second and a couple. Now a give right side. It's Bennett, and he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. As they've got it with a first and ten. Cousins now. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They go play action. Cousins. That's going to be caught by Moss. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there, and now they're looking at a first and goal. A chance for a first touchdown drive of the year. It's first and goal. Cook is in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Well, CD, there didn't seem to be much resistance there down near the goal line. 
Yeah, partner, from what I saw there, not a real good job of matching up defensively because to me, they looked like they were just in their base 3-4 package. You need bigger bodies in there in a goal line type situation. The 3-4 fine between the 20s, but not down here when you're guarding your end zone. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead grows to 10-0. The drive summary that time, five plays, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. Here's Humphreys. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Last time out, they had the fumble that led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles, but they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch, partner, for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. They'll keep it on the ground. Wilder, and he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Partner, that's another short run there, and I think the easy thing is to look at him right now and say, let's get away from him entirely. Let's start throwing the football, but I don't think you ever entirely abandon the run. It helps set a tone for the game for you, keeps your offensive linemen feeling good about themselves, and it actually tamps down a defense's pressure because if you just throw it all the time, it's going to tee off at the pass rush. 37 yards on the punt with no return, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. In fact, there's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now Cousins. His throw incomplete. The Vikings on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. Cousins to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be on just a yard or two shy of the 30. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Cousins gives way to Cook. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Now we're going to get a timeout. Here's we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, you always hate to see injuries, especially tough here in week one. Just hoping this is nothing serious. We'll take a quick timeout. Cousins now on second down. And he will find his man on the outside. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And now one yard to go on third down. Cousins. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. 
A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession, but the coverage held. It goes incomplete. Going absolutely nowhere. He'll wind up losing a yard or two. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop them short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on their early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. On second down, Wilder. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. On third down, Winston. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Multiple defenders getting home there for a loss of 11. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception. But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. Now a fair catch called for and made right on the 45-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 46. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender and the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, sometimes a thing of beauty. They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave them with second and a yard. Play action now, Cousins. And he's got his man in stride, complete. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Bennett, and he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. They end up getting stumped twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. Nothing fancy really on either side. They were just trying to punch it between the tackles but could not get it done. That felt very old-schoolish, didn't it? Because we always talk about how we spread it out on offense nowadays and try and create some running lanes. That one was really tight. Go get it. A big pile of bodies. Didn't quite get there. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Wow, first and goal, and defensively, all they can do is shake their heads. Not only did they allow the conversion, but a big play as well. I didn't like the play call. I loved it. Running situation for sure on fourth and short. They got the defense to commit too many men in the box to stop the run and had the guts to go for the pass instead. And as a result, they're set up first and goal. Cook. Diving for the end zone, and he'll get there. Touchdown. Sometimes offense can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. 
and that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Extra point right down the middle, and that makes our score 17-0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you now just you called can it. Go. He's got a man complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big pickup of 38. Uh, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there. That shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. So the offense a little antsy. The flag comes out. And a five-yard penalty. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Up the middle they go. Wilder. It's a five yard pickup, so essentially they get the penalty yardage back, and it's back to second and 10. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Second down, Winston. Wide open receiver complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 14. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. From the red zone now, Winston. He'll get that one to Carter complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. From the five, here's second and two. From the gun, Winston. Oh, what a read on the outside as it's intercepted. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Wow, this one, it is getting out of hand early. They add a pick six to the ledger now. Three-score lead still in the first half. And all that celebrating that you see and hear from those defenders is not just because they scored a touchdown on a pick six. It's because they're pitching a shutout in this one. Every defender's dream. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And the lead is now 24. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. A one more drive here for the Buccaneer offense in this first half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. And they've been kept off the scoreboard in this first half, but here toward the end, they're trying to change that in one fell swoop, but that winds up incomplete. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. And this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down right near the 24. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. Yard 
They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. On second down now. It's Bennett. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up, ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 22. On play action, they'll throw. He sets to fire deep. And it's knocked away and incomplete. When you look at the scoreboard, you'd think they'd be pretty comfortable right now with this lead, but these guys are absolutely not going to let up. They want to increase their lead, and they want to do it with a big play. Unable to connect in that attempt. And he'll manage only a couple here up to the 25. Third and eight. Now Cousins. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. They'll run on first down. Bennett, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Second and 11 at the 47-yard line. Throwing Cousins. Oh, and that is incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw is Cousins. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The Vikings send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. 31 yards on the punt there. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Winston completing a quick throw out wide. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 12.
Winston. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. And that's patience to be admired right there because he looks left, looks right, and waits for the right guy to come open, spots him in the middle of the field, and delivers. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Winston. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Now second and three. Now a handoff up the middle. Wilder. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one a first down pickup of eight. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Right back to him on first down. He's got it to the 43 here. It's been a struggle this entire game trying to move the ball on the ground. But every now and then you find a little chink in the armor, and that type of run right there lets them know that they can't stop every single run for almost no gain. And he'll be taken down well behind the line, and I think he might have just given those four yards right back. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss, and now it's third down. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And that is incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Throw left side, complete to Moss. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. From the gun, here's Cousins. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Working out of the gun, Cousins. He's got his target, that's complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now a give, right side. It's Bennett. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one, closed quickly, and helped force the incompletion. On third down, Cousins. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. The Vikings send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So a change of possession here on the punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. 
Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at their own 18. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. 52 yards rushing for him now as he's toted it 21 times. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. They'll keep it on the ground. Wilder. Even with that broken tackle, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. Second and 14. Brings up second and 14. They'll try the left side. Wilder, and he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Decent gain on the scramble at six, but now it's fourth. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to kick it away. On the return, here comes Lewis. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, 9 on the return. And they will take over first and 10. To throw, Cousins. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Glad to have you with us from Minneapolis. Third quarter here, second and 10. Up the middle they go. It's Bennett. And yeah, he'll be stopped at about the 38 after a pickup of four. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. Altogether, a pretty shaky start to the year for this defense as they defend another first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. Bennett, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now a give right side. It's Bennett. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. We've called a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. Now Cousins. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Here comes Humphreys on the return. And just a 30-yard punt that time. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. It's been a tough go for them. It's still without any points here in the fourth quarter. 
And a big deficit, Charles, but they move the football on some drives. They just haven't had any points. Yeah, and I know in their minds they're thinking the game plan has actually been working. We just haven't scored points. Well, isn't that the bottom line, partner, to put points on the board? So if you're moving it and you're not... Puts it on the carpet, it's out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. And the question, was the knee in fact down before his ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. On second down, it's Graham, and he'll be taken down right around the 27. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. They'll come up facing third and five. Jameis to throw it. He's got Carter complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Here's Winston. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. This one winding toward a conclusion, and how would you assess how the secondary is played? Well, we just saw them take another shot downfield that was incomplete, correct? Correct. So my assessment is that if anyone's played really well in this game, it's been the secondary. That was the latest example. Yeah, they've been solid. Really, the whole defense has been solid. Still pitching a shutout. To the air again with Winston. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find... Plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Jameis now on first down. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Second and ten. On play action, Winston. Throw left side complete. That's Carter. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. While the medical staff checks on him, we'll step aside in this week one contest. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Winston. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Up 
Jameis again. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Buccaneers are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. There you go, Charles. His first touchdown pass in the new season. And he had a strong rookie year. So much more expected of him this one, as you might imagine. He threw that one with confidence and assuredness. And I noticed that the celebration a little bit more subdued than his first touchdown pass last year as a rookie. Yeah, he certainly is acting like he's done it before. He's got it. So they convert the two that keeps their slim hopes alive as we're back to a two-score game. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The Bucs ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. Now Lewis selects to return it. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Now all of a sudden, we've got an interesting game here. You just saw them go down and score a touchdown. And what was a comfortable lead at halftime, it's down to a two-score game. And so the obvious thought is they've got to wrap things back up again. Got to get the offense into high gear. But we've seen this before. When you've kind of been in shutdown mode for a while, thinking that you're okay, it's hard to mash the gas again and have everything work perfectly. They've got to fast together a good drive right here and now. Because defensively, got to be feeling confident they haven't allowed a point this half. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And the defense loses him, it's complete. Down the sideline he goes. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there, 79 yards. And the Vikings are closing in on a winning start to the year as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Point after, right down the middle. And that pushes the lead up to 23. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Now, whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. The false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. To throw is Winston. It's Graham again with the catch, just like the last play. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Here's third and nine. To throw, Winston. And that will be incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. That's interference. Defense. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. Up the middle they go. Graham 
And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Winston now to throw on first down. And now another turnover as this one's intercepted. And the Vikings are going to get the football here as he gets this up to the 38-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. And out now come the Vikings. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Second and seven. Back to the ground. This time, Cook. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Play action now. Cousins. That is incomplete. I think it's fairly safe to call this game over, but they're still trying to bomb it downfield and add to their lead. Almost makes you start to feel for the defense and root for them a little bit, too. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally... I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. He couldn't get away. He'll wind up losing a dozen yards, a 12-yard loss, and it brings up third. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. Ball start. Offense. And they get Tristan Warfs, first-round pick in 2020. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. Now a handoff up the middle. Graham. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Give him nine on the carry, but it's not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position. First and 10. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. On third down, it's Bennett. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. 
No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. From the 25, here's second down at a yard. They'll keep it on the ground. Bill. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. 96 yards rushing now on 23 carries so far. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and they'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. On first down, it's Bennett. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> we got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Well, CD, always a little extra excitement for week one, and one of our early window games here in week one on a Sunday comes to a close. Good to be back in the booth with you, my friend. And it's good to be back in the booth with you as well. And we know that not everyone's going to start the season 1-0, right? Half the league is going to have a loss on their record. But everyone's got to build off of that opener. And how many coaches tell us every single year, you make your most progress between week one and week two. We'll see how both of these teams progress the rest of the season. So for the Vikings, that'll be a happy locker room as they start this season 1-0. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, for Tampa Bay, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves next week at home against the Chicago Bears. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.